All right, well, it's Wednesday, reverse engineer day, which means we get to test this out, see how it works in the class, which <laughs> apparently it's not gonna work pretty good. I just tried it and it didn't work. Well, we got 45 minutes till they get here. Let's get to it. Here, it's gonna be the morning of unplanned learning opportunities. Your call yesterday, I fixed this and got the contactor working. Well, I was sitting there working on the road rig and noticed this contactor was dropping out and i hadn't turned the heat on i had low, it was a little warm in here yesterday so the air conditioner was on so it was cold when i got here and it was dropping in and out now that the room's warmed up it's quit what do you think cold sorter joint something like that it's just <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one to find just hopefully it uh quits while the room's warm for today well, I waited about 15 minutes. Now that the room's warm, uh, the contactor's not dropping out. Now, once I figure out the root cause, I guess I, on an off week, I'll just leave the heat off in here and see if it starts clunking. I, will, I won't throw that part away. That part will end up somewhere in this training center. I'll figure out how to make it radically do that. that. I've been waiting 15 minutes and it just dropped out. Boy, if I could have got the video over there fast enough. Maybe I should just put the camera in front of it. Here's the program for that one, and probably this audio not responding. I'm wildly guessing it's erratically dropping out, so I'm going to add a little something to it to catch that. So I'm going to go over here to my main routine, and we're just going to drop a GSV in here. So let's see, we're going to do rung down, and we'll go to the input output category and get a GSV instruction. And we're gonna make this our module. We're gonna make this a 5069 AENT. When I grab the entry status, and I'm just gonna put that in Control logics. Actually, that's not even really the control logics. I guess from the perspective of this, it is a control logics trainer, but I'm going to do this control logics flex entry. And we'll right click new, create. And then we'll go to the compare category. Oh. And then copy it. This came into a bunch of clanking. And then we're going to get an NE instruction. That's our not equal to. And a happy value on an entry status is 16384. So if it's not equal to 16384, we're going to come over here to our counter, bring a CTU down, and we're going to just put control logics. Connection. Access breaks. I get a little descriptive. And a counter will count right past this preset value, so I don't even have to put anything in on it. And we'll hit the finalize button on that. And right now we are 16384, so if that drops out at all, we'll get an increment over here. Now I'll get some coffee, go through my emails, then I gotta figure out, well, no, no, actually the first thing I gotta do, I gotta get that thing running, the new Rogue Rig. Yeah, I should have been doing that instead of messing with that. So on yesterday's video, engineered appliance repair said, oh wow, looks like the IP Explorer got a firmware software update. And yeah, while the SIM IPE is a really cool device, it's not a miracle worker. And so we've been working on adding some prompts mainly to help steer you to knowing that you need to change your IP address depending on what you're trying to do. So example, this is, this is the Island Trainer. It's got a variety of devices on it. And mainly this one is on a different network. And just to show a little bit about how the setup is on this, if I go to prepare address, 
select network, you can have multiple networks configured. And I'm usually on the 21, that's the main classroom network. Network one, that's, we'll call it the more common network and that's why we put all our PLC trainers that we ship out on that one. There's a 10 network, that's the one we're gonna find that one on. And then I have a four fun configured network that ought to show us enough what we're looking for. And so I'm on network two and I'm gonna go discover device. And we see it's rolling up and already we got a red on the net too. So what that's telling us is that some of the devices that it's finding out there, and he warned you down here, are not on the SEMIPE's network. Now a really cool new feature we've talked about but maybe you haven't seen it is it does have a filter now, but let's just scroll up through them first and see what we see so we can see the difference in how they would look. So this is a Turk Fin 20 and mainly its IP address is green. That means it matches what the SIM IPE is. And when we press the OK button, all the replace and all those features will work. And let's go see if we can find a red device out here though. So all these devices are on the right network. And then, okay, so here's that. Oh, wait, that's not that PLC. Okay, I was expecting that to be that PLC. Well, what is this? Well, okay, so I have a PowerFlex 525 drive on 192.168.1.12. That should not be there. Well, we're gonna come back to it. Well, no, we're not. We gotta figure that out. Here, this is a good example of, of it. So my first thought was that Mary Bruce had accidentally left a trainer on being tested. Uh, but yeah, she's building trainers, but none of them are put together nearly enough to have any power on them. And this should be fun to hunt down. There's only... 15 or so power flexes in the room. But I'm wildly gonna guess that it's this one right here since we were doing a video with it the other day. We'll press down here and slide the cover off of it. And actually this blew somebody's mind the other day. Uh, if you didn't know it, uh, once you have the list, you can unplug the power flex, I mean the um, semi-P from the network and take it around with you. And mainly we are looking for DF E5, whoops, you can't see that, DFE5 at the end of the MAC address. And that MAC address is, I'm not going to be able to focus in on it, but that MAC address is right here on the side of it. I'm going to take a picture of that. I can't even read it. Okay, so there we go. I got the focus for going now. That is not DFE5. Uh huh. Here is DFE5. So the last four, kind of like your social when they're asking for the doctor's office. So the last four is usually unique enough to tell us that this trainer is it. If you recall last week when we were adding the ethernet connections, I even was like, should I add ethernet to this one? It's never been connected to the network. I use it mainly to make three phase power so we can talk about how motors rotate. And yeah, of course, like always, I stole this drive from Mary Bruce's stash of configure PLC trainer drives and its default IP address is 192.168. 112. All right, so let's use this as an opportunity to learn about these new features of the SIM IP. So I'm going to unplug the PowerFlex from the network and I'm just going to plug directly into it. And then I'm on network two, which is 192.168.20. I'm going to go to discover device. And even though they're on the wrong network, it did discover it. And we're going to hit the up arrow, and it's red here, and that's our key fact indicator that something is not right with our configuration compared to it. I'm going to press the OK button. Here's where normally we can do the replace and all that. And I'm going to try to enable boot P on this. And when I do, it's going to say unable to reach device from the SIM IPE because we're on 192.168.20. And it is 192.168.1. So just try to give it a little indicator that you need to go change your network. Now, another one we do is we don't configure any IP address in it. So if I go prepare address and we go up and we're going to select network four because it has no configuration. So pretty much an IP address of 0.0.0.0. .0 and now when we go to discover device, <coughs> oops, I did. <laughs> I talked and then I didn't hit the OK button. Let me do that again. Select network, network number four. And now we go to discover device. And it's gonna warn you here, the SIM IP address is not set. So still we get some discovery features, even then you're not gonna get as good 
as even a wrong IP address. But we go up. There's our PowerFlex 525. And I press the OK button. And I try to enable boot P. And it's going to tell you still can't match because we're at 0, .0, .0. So now we'll do it the right way. We'll go down to prepare address, select network, and we're going to go to network 1 because that is in the range of this PowerFlex drive. And then we'll go to Discover Device. Now it's green and happy. We press the OK button. And then we go to Enable Boot P, which also some of you are probably wondering, well, why don't you just do the replace address? There is a hitch with the PowerFlex 525. It requires a power cycle in the middle of it. And since we can't command it to cycle power here, we have to do this one step by step. So Enable Boot P, it says it was successful. Now we'll need to cycle the power on it. Power back up. And all right, we're gonna do it the wrong way again. I'm gonna be on, we're on the network of 192.168.1 right now. I'm gonna to go to a new target address and I want this drive at Oh, what do I want this drive at? In my trusty spreadsheet, my next one it would be 96. So 192, 168, 20, and 96. And press OK. And even now it's going to warn us 192, 168, 20, 96, and 192, 168, 1, 100. They're not going to match up. But still, we're going to try it anyway, because that's what we do. So we'll hit Discover Device. And it found one device. And we go up. And it tells us here, this is making a boot P request, but it can't assign it because the target address is on a different network. And similarly, we'll go down to Prepare Address. And select Network. Let's go back up to Network 4, which is the other wrong network. But in this case, it's a 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. It's going to warn us again that it's not set. Still could discover it, but we can't assign an address because it's not set. So most of the improvements are to help us understand that we need to have our IP address at 192.168.20 to do what we want. And then we can go discover device, go up and get the power flex. Oops. Oh. Got to reset my target because I had the target on 1.12 on that network. So we're going to go to prepare address. Then go down to new IP address or new target address, 192.168.20. And then 96. I think it was 96 or we'll have a new learning opportunity. And now discover device. Go up, let's make it a boot P request. We're gonna assign it that. Also from here, we could change it if we needed to tweak it a little bit. Press the okay button. It's going to send it, it accepted it. And now very important, we gotta press the okay button to set it to static. Well, we averted an unplanned learning opportunity because Mary Bruce will probably test those trainers later today. And sometimes she's plugged into this network, sometimes she isn't. Just depends on who's doing what and the rhythm they have. Also, yeah, on this, it was operator error. Thank goodness. Because, yeah, it is just about time. Yeah, so I got a lot to learn about how to operate this, too, apparently. One really cool feature, if you never used it, is sometimes you need an odd software. Like, I know I, I have a license of RS5, but I can't figure out what it is. But uh, you can check out temporary licenses. So yeah, I got to look at an RS Logics 5 program. I'm gonna hit the checkout button. And there we go, at least temporarily, we're cooking with RS Logics 5 Pro. All right, so last recording this morning, when I heard the contactor click, you know, I added this code and it has not gone and broke a single time. And also, I haven't heard the contactor click a single time, so I'm gonna leave the heat off tonight. And when we come in the morning, we'll see if it's going clickety-click. Rogue Rig did run. They figured it out pretty good. 
Got some notes on things that uh, we want to modify on it already, but yeah, I'd say it had a successful first run.